This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar providing an introduction to Apple Motion 5.5. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video training, I'll show you how to create a custom transition in motion for use in Apple Final Cut Pro. We'll adjust drop zones, add and animate blurs, add and animate position, add and animate scale, add and animate drop shadows, and we'll publish the position controls to give us even more control inside Final Cut. And this one is going to be a transition. So I select transition. It only needs to be four seconds long. So I'll make it four seconds. And there's our transition. Again, we don't need the timeline. It just gets in the way. First thing that I want to do is this foreground clip needs to last the entire duration of the transition. And right now it only goes halfway. Put the playhead where I want that clip to end. And type the letter O. And notice the duration of that element now extends for the entire four seconds of the transition. Select the second part. Notice the second clip ends 50% in. I want it to start at the beginning. Put the playhead where you want the clip to start. Type an I. I sets an in. O sets an out. And what I want to do in this transition is I want to have it be blurry. Select the element, go up to filters, go down to blur. Gaussian blur is always the best choice for a blur. Select it. Notice the blur applies for the entire duration. But I want it to be animated. To animate it, we're going to use keyframes. The parameter we're going to change is amount. I'm going to set a keyframe here and drag this so it's really blurry. Go to the end, and as long as I've changed one setting, as soon as I change the same setting, it automatically sets a keyframe. So let's turn this off and notice what we've got. We've got something which is very blurry, which comes into focus. That's my animated blur. I'm done with that. Now we need to animate the foreground. I want the foreground to stay full screen. Again, we're going to make this smaller so we can see what we're working with. I'm going to go to Properties. We're going to do this in two steps. I'm going to set a keyframe for position. I'm going to set a keyframe for scale. With the keyframe for scale set, I'm going to set an end position right here and set the scale to zero. So now we're going to see our transition scales from full screen to nothing. Then with my position center, I'm going to go down to the end right there click and drag, click and drag to say I want it to go there, and click and drag, I want it to go here. It's easier to drag the numbers than it is to drag a very, very small object in the frame. As I play it back, it flies back. By the way, to change ease in and ease out, if you control click on a keyframe, you can switch it from linear to smooth and it just looks a little bit smoother when we're doing this kind of a transition. Okay, the last thing we want to do is to add a drop shadow. So again, let's select the top one. Go to Properties. Under Properties is Drop Shadow. Show the drop shadow. I want the drop shadow to be very soft, 50%. I want it to be extremely blurry, All right about there. I want it to be very long distance, 150. That's, that's my first set of keyframes. And you can see here, oops, the angle is wrong. We'll change the angle to there. We've got a drop shadow. Now let's go to the end right there. And now I want to take the opacity to 100%. To Notice it sets keyframes automatically. No blur, no distance, and keep the angle the same. Now as we move this, notice that the, the blur gets closer and closer and closer, reinforcing the movement as if the foreground clip were getting closer to the background clip. Let's save this, and we're going to call this a zoom blur. Store it in the Larry category. Remember to create a new category. You say new category. Store it in Larry. Publish it. Done. Go back to Final Cut. Go to Transitions. There's our zoom blur. Drop it on top of the berries. We'll make it a little bit longer. And I'm going to use the arrow keys so you can watch this. 
And look at that. that cool? Except, what happens if I want to change the position? If I select the zoom, there's no settings that I can adjust. If I want to make a change to any template created in motion, changes are reflected inside the browser, but not for that effect or title or transition applied to a clip in the timeline. This is locked. Changing the settings doesn't change any existing transitions, which is what you want because you don't want to suddenly make a change in motion and have it globally screw up your entire project. So if I want to change this effect, you have to delete it from the timeline, open it in motion here. When you save it in motion, it will be updated in the browser, at which point you reapply it to your clip. Let's delete this. Control click on it and open it in motion. Go to the top transition, which changes position. And here, if we click on this, we can say Publish. And when I publish this and save it and go to Final Cut and bring the transition, it's instantly updated. And now I have the ability here, let's go to the first, first frame. And we're going to set this to be 0, 0, full screen. Go to the last frame and set this to be over and down, have it zoom into the bench. Notice it automatically set a keyframe. And now, using the arrow keys, it flies back from full screen and zoom is exactly where I want it to be. Done. And the animation changes, speeds up or slows down, based upon the duration of the transition. Ta-da! Let's have it go back up again. Click up here, and click up here. Is that cool or what? <laughs> ah, I could play forever. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar providing an introduction to Apple Motion 5.5. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 304. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.